Hi everyone, are you okay? So we're all back, we're unpacked, the washing machine's on, I've been shopping, we're almost back to normal. What we miss when we go away is a Sunday dinner. Nowhere else does it as well as the UK, no matter where you go, never as good as your own. So I've had a piece of beef in the freezer, I've defrosted it last night so I'm going to do a roast beef and Yorkshire pudding. So I'll show you my ingredients, I've got my slow cooker out as well. So that's just a piece of brisket. It's quite a big piece. I got it from Pioneer. You usually get, um, it's about 25 to 30 pound, but you get two big bits like that. And I use one and I put one in the freezer. So I've defrosted that. Keep it tied up because it can be difficult to cut. It goes that tender. Four carrots, half a turnip. I've chopped them up. I've chopped them chunky in a stock pot. And I've set my slow cooker to high. And I've got my book there because the legs still fall off and I've still not got a new one. Okay, we're just going to put some hot water in there. Just boiled the kettle. Um, and I would say an inch, two inches, doesn't come up to halfway, almost halfway of the meat. So we're going to put that on that stays in there for five hours. I've put a bit of foil on because I like to create a good seal so the steam can't escape. Um, if you're going out for the day and you want it in there for longer than five hours, stick it on low and it can be in there as long as you like. But five hours on high. So I'm going to show you how to do some Yorkshire puddings. The beef's got another hour or so to go, so we'll make the Yorkshire pudding mixture. You just need plain flour, some milk and some eggs. Most important of all, you need something to measure, like a teacup, something small. And you need equal quantities of flour, milk and eggs. All into a jug. Now I can't stress this enough. It's really important that you use equal quantities. That's what makes your Yorkshire puddings rise. So equal quantities, i.e. one cup, one mug of eggs, flour and milk. Equal quantities. So put your oven on 240 and let it warm up. Put some oil in a muffin tray, not a standard bun tray, a muffin tray. You need a deep, a deep case. Just swirl it around and pop that in the oven to get hot. So your tray just goes into a 240 oven for five to 10 minutes. We want that oil to be hot. So I've gave the batter a mix. Don't worry if it's lumpy, it doesn't matter. Watch you don't burn yourself and your oil might be spitting. You come here and just pour it in. See the oil sizzle. And then shut the oven door and these should take about 20 to 30 minutes. After 10 minutes, turn the oven down, just because you don't want them to burn, and they will burn if you keep them on 240 all the way. So after 10 minutes, turn the oven down to about 200, 220, because um, you want them cooked all the way through. You don't want them burnt on the outside and doughy in the middle. So beef's done. It's been in five hours. Come and have a look. Looks nice, doesn't it? So we'll just need to lift it out and let it rest a bit. And then with a slotted spoon, take out the vegetables. You've got carrot and turnip that's been cooked in beef stock. So look, this is your stock that you've got left. Look who's come to join us. The minute there's a bit of meat, there she is. Now I'm gonna make some gravy, don't just move. So just tip your stock into a pan. I don't know if you can, but I can put these on the heat. I've done it before and cracked it, and it makes a mess. So it depends on what type of cooking you've got. Right, so we, we like a lot of gravy. Put that on. So I've also got some vegetable stock. I've done some cabbage and broccoli. I haven't drained the water. I'm just going to put some of the water in there because I want a full pan of gravy. 
we like a lot. And you know I'm a fan of a Bisto, oh it's not Bisto, quick so gravy granule. There's nothing wrong with a gravy granule. Get you to where you need to be. I like this brand the best, it's out of Aldi and it's nicer than actual Bisto. So just bring your gravy to the boil and let your meat rest. Let's check the Yorkshire's. Oh. The auctions are done. Works every time, every single time. So we'll get plated up. Now it's really hard to cut this thinly unless you let it go cold because it just falls apart. So I do quite thick slices. Try not to burn my fingers. Secret to a good roast potato is cook it until you think it's too far and then you make sure you get a crispy roast. forward to that on a Sunday you can't go wrong everyone loves that so like it and share it I'm sweating I'm going to sit in a cold room like it and share it shows what you have for your Sunday roasts it doesn't even have to be Sunday you can have a Monday roast or a Wednesday roast let's know what you do see you soon bye bye